So the moon in Scorpio may have had a pretty big effect on a lot of us over the weekend. Uncovering a lot of things that um, you at this time may be ready to deal with. Do not worry, do not fret, okay? Just take the experience, focus on what came up. And instead of focusing on reacting to it, focus on then instead resolving it. So ask yourself, how do I handle this, okay? Hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Yeah. So happy Monday, guys. Um, it is Monday. Um, I hope you guys had a good weekend. I hope you enjoyed the energies of the 1010 portal, which was yesterday on Sunday, October 10th. Um, I did happen to see, I caught 1010 on 1010 yesterday. I was sitting at my computer, you know, doing my thing, chilling, whatnot, whatever, studying, whatnot, whatever. And um, I just happened to look at my phone at the right time and it was 1010 in the morning on 1010. It was pretty awesome. But I hope you guys had a good day. I hope you all had a good weekend. Saturn did station direct yesterday. Uh, Jupiter goes direct on the 16th or the, I think the 17th actually. Um, so yay. Mercury, uh, stations direct also on the 17th or something like that. So if you haven't experienced or noticed any shift yet, you're probably going to within the next few days to the coming week. Um, I do have a question. I do have a question though. So Venus went into Saturn, not Saturn, what am I talking about? Venus went into Scorpio, I believe on Friday, sometime on Friday. Did anybody feel that? Now, keep in mind, you guys, I am speaking on, a, when I talk about astrology, I speak about it from the uh, true sidereal system, um, which is something that I learned about through mastering the Zodiac. Um, he is a wonderful gentleman who um, practices sidereal astrology. He has a website, masteringthezodiac.com. He also has a YouTube channel, Mastering the Zodiac, here on YouTube. Um, and he uses uh, a program called Prometheus, of which I, get, I acquired through him with his training course. Um, so that's what I use. So I use the true sidereal system, which does include Ophiuchus, and it also includes the actual size of the constellations, right? Not all of the constellations are 30 degrees. Some are bigger, some are much, some are much bigger, some are much shorter. Um, so with that said, the sun is still in Virgo, literally is still in Virgo, regardless as to what system you use. If you were to get um, a, a sky gazing app or a stargazing app for your phone, like say Skywalk is one that works really well, you would see that in terms of where the actual constellations are and where the planets are in those constellations, the constellations or the planets, planets are not in the constellations that mainstream or tropical astrology mentions or says that they're in, literally. Like it's not about the system that you use. It's about where the actual planets are literally at a given moment. Not to say that mainstream or tropical astrology is bad or intrinsically wrong. It's just that it's an outdated system. Quite frankly, if you, if you look at where the, where the stars are or where the, where the planets are and where the actual constellations are in our sky, mainstream or tropical astrology is literally an outdated system because our sky has changed, which is natural. The planet moves on its axis, okay? And the planet is not on the same, the, the axis is not to the same degrees. Now, in current human history, they're not in this, it's not the same as where it was back in Babylonian days when the mainstream astrology or tropical astrology system was put into place. I'm not trying to bash anybody here. I'm just straight facts, you guys. Follow or practice whatever system you prefer. Here for me on my channel, I practice the true sidereal system. Okay, so with that said, uh, the sun is like dead center of Virgo right now. And Virgo is one of the 
biggest, I personally feel like Virgo is the largest constellation in our sky just from looking at it, okay? Anyway, um, so I don't know, I say all that to say, on Friday, Venus went into Scorpio. And with my native, with my, excuse me, my um, uh, natal, my birth chart, Venus is in Pisces for me, in the eighth house. <laughs> so, um, yeah, things can get a little freaky around me. <laughs> but <laughs> when, when Venus went into, into Scorpio, especially since Scorpio is the eighth house ruler and Venus is already, my natal Venus is already in a watery sign anyway, I felt that shit, man. Woo! Did I feel that shit, honey? I mean, like, and at first I was like, okay, well, Saturn is going direct, so I guess this is me getting my libido back. <laughs> silly you actually I did a little bit of digging and it's because Venus went into into Scorpio I'm gonna be honest with you I love Venus in Scorpio <laughs> right we may not want to go too deep into that one <laughs> anyway I was just saying that because I wanted to know if any of you guys picked up on that 555 on the counter um but I don't know that was just a funny little tidbit Y'all let me know how you experienced that. I'm still feeling it, you guys. And and for me, I, it feels like um, strong sexual drive. Uh, but I kept reminding myself as I was thinking through it and analyzing it. I didn't really investigate it until yesterday. Um, but as I was really thinking through it, I kept hearing myself say, it's creative energy. Sexual energy is literally creative energy, okay? So for me, I'm able, since I'm not really seeing anybody and I'm not sleeping with anybody, I'm not seeing, it's not that I'm not really seeing anybody, I'm not seeing anybody, I'm not sleeping with anybody, so I get to use that energy for myself. I get to enjoy it myself, which I did, and I get to use it for creative pursuits. And as, as Saturn and Jupiter, like Saturn is already stationed direct as of yesterday, the 1010, Jupiter will be stationing direct, I believe, on the 17th. Mars, or I'm sorry, Mercury is going to be going direct soon. As we feel all of this starting to shift, I do feel a little bit of drive, a little bit of creative energy, uh, of wanting to study, wanting to learn, wanting to invest my time and my attention into the things that, you know, truly interest me. When over the last five or six months or so, I was not in that place. And for me, I will say that this per this past retrograde season was more about me um, tilling my garden, ew, tilling my garden, cultivating um, and cultivating the, the space for my personal garden. Janet Jackson says, um, love Janet Jackson, but also you guys know that, but also oh, I didn't put my necklace on. That's fine. Also, um, dreams. I've been dreaming a lot lately. Uh, the moon actually was in, uh, was in Scorpio Friday into Saturday. Um, the moon shifted into Ophiuchus Sunday afternoon, something like that. Yeah. Um, but while the moon was in Scorpio, I was dreaming a lot. And Janet Jackson was in my dream last night. Go figure. Like, I gave her a, lo a hug and I was like, oh my God, I love you so much. And she literally said back to me, oh, I love you too. And I heard it in like her real, like real Janet Jackson voice. I was like, oh my God, Janet Jackson. But anyway, um, yeah, Janet Jackson was in my dream last night. But Janet says in the Velvet Rope album, you know, what is it? Let me get the full phrase for you. It's, um, oh, you see, you can't run away from your pain. Because wherever you run, there you will be. You have to learn to water your spiritual garden. Then you will be free. It's in the it's on the very last song of that album. Beautiful song. But anyway, I mean, she was right. And what I feel like I've spent this retrograde period or this retrograde season this year on was not necessarily planting physical seeds to have physical a physical harvest once we got into the harvest season. For me, it was all about tilling the soil, 
um, regenerating my garden, doing whatever it is I needed to do to clear out the weeds, to clear out the pests, to re um, to re inoculate the soil. And this, I'm speaking of, I'm speaking to like the garden of my personal self, right? So I feel personally that this harvest that I'm receiving is a stronger sense of constitution within myself, a stronger sense of grounding, a stronger sense of solidity, a stronger sense of self. Um, and now I really have more space, a healthier space to really start planting seeds. And so now as things are starting to go direct, I personally feel like I'm ready to really start investigating, planning, putting in the work and the effort that would, that would, be, that would benefit me in the future. 1010 10, again, boop. Okay. So that's been for me personally. I'm interested in hearing how you guys feel about this. I'm interested in hearing how this resonates for you. Let me know down in the comment section below. I am gonna pause for a second, get refresh my coffee because it's getting a little cold, and then we'll get into this. Yes, hold on just a second, guys. Alrighty, kids, let's get into this today. Um, I wanna go with the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot as our main deck, and then we'll be using the Los Carabello deck for clarification, yeah? Let's get into this and see what we've got for the moment. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Alrighty, guys, let's get into this. See what we've got for the moment. Yeah, this is five shuffles, so this is one. Two. Three. Four. Alrighty, kids. So let's see what we've got for today. Queen of Cups is at the bottom of the deck so far. I heard Moon and Scorpio. So the Moon and Scorpio may have had a pretty big effect on a lot of us over the weekend. Un uncovering, oof, okay, uncovering a lot of things that um, you at this time may be ready to deal with. Even if at the moment, those things that were uncovered for you were striking, were difficult, were triggering, caused some sort of reactive tendencies to flare within you. Keep in mind, Mercury is in retrograde, okay? If you got into any sort of battles with anybody or things just came up, if there was some sort of emotional chaos over the weekend, do not worry, do not fret, okay? Just take the experience. First of all, Forgive yourself for any sort of transgressions, any, any ways that you may have popped off on someone, whatnot, whatever, okay? Forgive yourself for that. Don't worry about that. Don't focus on that. Focus on what came up. And instead of focusing on reacting to it, focus on then instead resolving it. So ask yourself, okay, I see you, X, whatever you are. Ooh, okay, it may have been an X. Yikes, all right. But I see you for what you are, or I intend to see you for what you are. How do I handle this, okay? That should be, I feel like that should be a mantra, a mantra for many of us right now. How do I handle this? Not how do I react to this? How do I handle this? Even better, how do I resolve this, okay? Uh, the moon and, I just heard the moon and Scorpio brought up a lot of shit for, for, for a ton of people. 
It's okay. It needed to come to the surface. All right? And I say this all the time, you guys, and I will continue to say it. You will not be able to heal or fix anything if you are not aware of it. So take this awareness as a blessing. Okay? Excellent. Let's move forward. What's going on with the collective right now? Please, Spirit, what would you like to say to the collective at this time? Okay. Great. All right. Eight of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. Okay. But this is what we're coming out of. This is an overall energy, right? You have four cards. Two of them have fallen face up. The Magician and the Ace of Pentacles. And what I heard here is planting the seeds, tilling the soil. I do feel like many of us are in this place or in this time period where we are getting ready to start to really plant some seeds for our future. And the first step in that, you guys, is breaking yourself free from any sort of mental confinement, mental trickery. For some of us, this Eight of Swords, I will say this, for some people, not necessarily for some of us that are here, for some people, the element of this is breaking out of a spiritual jail. I don't really want to classify that any longer or any further. If that applies to you, then take it as it resonates, okay? There are reasons for it. I am, I do feel like some of us have been wrongfully thrown into some sort of spiritual jail. Okay. But either way, breaking out of this. Underneath the Eight of Swords at the bottom of the deck is the Seven of Cups to the Five of Cups, but then ultimately to the Two of Cups, which the Two of Cups could represent some sort of reconciliation or... Uh, revival of a, of a specific relationship. I also wanted to say a spiritual relationship, but quite frankly, I will call all relationships spiritual. We'll talk about that later. But also, this could be reconciling with yourself. So, Eight of Swords to the, eight, to the Seven of Cups, breaking out of this spiritual jail and addressing, or just this mental con confinement, mental prison, right? Mental blockages, even, and addressing that. Addressing the confusion, undressing the, undressing, okay, undressing the monsters, undressing the demons, uh, spiritually speaking, being naked represents being completely bare, nothing to hide, everything to show. So some of you could be undressing your demons, okay, taking off the masks, but dealing with what comes with coming out of this confinement within your mind. And then processing the emotions, five of cups, and ultimately being able to cultivate a better relationship with yourself, two of cups, that ultimately leads you to moving forward with certain heart desires or being open in your heart because of a transformation that is happening. There's Scorpio right there, the moon in Scorpio, okay? We had the queen of cups come out, well, was at the bottom of the deck first. The queen of cups represents Cancerian energy. Cancer is ruled by the moon. The moon is an emotional celestial, right? So the transformation that comes with that, okay? Excellent. So as a result, the magician and the ace of pentacles. And I keep hearing, when I look at this, I keep hearing tilling the soil, getting ready for your future endeavors, your seeds to be planted that will grow in the future, right? I feel very specifically with the magician, this is an active role in the preparation, getting your tools together, getting your medium, your environment ready for the seeds ultimately that you are going to plant. Some of you are literally in this moment right now of getting ready to plant your seeds. Others of you are still working on breaking out of this mental prison. Don't worry about it because we're all on different paths or all on different parts of our path. No matter where you may find yourself in your moment, in your existence, you are in the perfect place for your own self. Do not get lost in the trap. Do not trap yourself again by comparing yourself to others, okay? Or your journey, your path, your progress to others. It's not a competition, all right? Excellent. Two more cards that have fallen face down. Somewhat energies underneath the surface here. Okay, you have the Hierophant with the Page of Cups. First thing I heard here is what did you learn through the Hierophant? That is creating a new emotional understanding, 
um, an emotional reset is what I'm getting with this page of cups here. For some of us, this translates into being ready to enter the world again, to step out of your comfort zone. Some of you are feeling ready to dream again or that you are allowed to dream again. Prepared to dream again. Actively dreaming again. Interesting. I do want to get into clarification, but um, I just want to, I want to see if I can channel a little bit more from the Hierophant here. Yes, the Hierophant represents structure, it represents um, uh, uh, institutions, but also the Hierophant, in my opinion, as a reader, represents Saturnian energy, which is exactly why I heard, when I first saw the Hierophant, I heard, what did you learn? What structure have you built through this time? What structure have you built throughout this retrograde period that is allowing you to now have a new sense, I heard, a new sense of direction, a new sense of emotional reality, an emotional refreshedness. The Page of Cups can also represent your inner child. Your inner child emerging out of the structure that has been built during the retrograde season. Ready to dream again, ready to believe again. Not believing in the same old thing, no, but that's part of what we learned here. Getting ready to or actively believing in ourselves again is what I heard. Beautiful. Excellent, you guys. All right, let's get into some clarification. Five shuffles here. Eight of Pentacles wanted to pop out. That was weird. The video literally just like stopped out of nowhere on me. Interesting. Mercury in retrograde? Okay. But anyway, the Eight of Pentacles showed itself, so this is representing the work that we are doing. I keep hearing tilling the soil. That might as well be our title. Yeah. Five shuffles here. This is one. This is two. This is three. Interesting. The Hierophant and the Page of Pentacles in reverse just popped out. Okay. Um, for the collective here, what this is kind of feeling like, I, I, I feel like I want to compare the Page of Pentacles to the Page of Cups. Because you see you have the Hierophant and the Page of Cups here, right? But then what popped out is the Hierophant with the Page of Pentacles. But the Page of Pentacles is in reverse. This is not a new start from strictly material means, which is what we've been in, okay? This is a new start from a greater sense of emotional clarity, a stronger emotional place. Instead of putting so much focus on the actual physical right? Being obedient, keeping with the structure, the the societal structure. I heard um, an independent thinker. The Page of Pentacles is a very loyal, very obedient individual, okay? There is, a, there is a sense of giving this up, the Page of Pentacle aspect, and instead following through with intuition, with feeling, with an open heart, with emotion, with compassion. Instead of just tri strictly following through, following the rules, just because some elite individual or someone in a place of power tells us to. That's a big aspect of this, is what I just heard. Okay. All right. Um, I think... This is, we'll just say this is three. Now, oh, shoot, now the cards are all, are all mixed up. Oh well, I'll fix it later. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty, so 
Well, let's start with, okay, good. Let's start with the Magician and the Ace of Pentacles. So far at the bottom of the deck though, you do have the Five of Pentacles. Now, like I said, when restarting my shuffle, things got reversed. But we have the page of, I'm sorry, the five of pentacles in reverse, which is kind of similar to the page of pentacles in reverse um, in the fact that the page of pentacles is new, is just starting out, doesn't really have much, um, doesn't really have much of their own to speak to. The five of pentacles in reverse is kind of a similar energy, or at least it's feeling similar in this moment. Five of Pentacles in reverse is a sense of lack mentality that has gone out the window, which is probably a big part of this Eight of Swords that you're breaking free from, okay? But let's clarify the Magician and the Ace of Pentacles here, yeah? What is the Magician and the Ace of Pentacles for the Collective, please, Spirit? Some clarity. The magician with the Ace of Pentacles, okay? Aha, uh -huh. all right. Overall energy is justice in reverse with the Queen of Cups in reverse and the Six of Cups upright. Um, so what I'm feeling like here is justice in reverse is talking about injustice from the past that has to do with a lack of emotional um, stability, a lack of emotional clarity, it may be even a lack of emotional maturity that had, that created a level of injustice in your life and led you down a part of the path that was not right for you. However, that is changing or has changed. You have the Hermit here and the Ace of Wands upright. So going within, figuring yourself out, figuring out from what figuring out what from the past has been holding you back is what's now creating this moment or this even momentum for you to plant something new. Okay, that's beautiful. Simple, but beautiful. All right, let's move forward. The Hierophant and the Page of Cups. What's the Hierophant and the Page of Cups for the Collective Peace Spirit? Lots of reversals here. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Overall energy is the emperor upright. All right. So it seems that we are taking greater control, even though there is um, a new emotional reality that is an element of this situation. There's still a strong level of control, a strong level of protection, a strong level of authority when it comes to your own life. Underneath the uh, the Emperor is the Four of Wands upright, and then the Five of Cups reversed, and the Five of Pentacles reversed again, okay? So this is letting go of the pain, letting go of the strife, letting go of the emotions, okay? Letting go of the sorrow, coming out of a mourning phase. Also, letting go of any sort of lack mentality or disbelief in yourself, belief that you can't do it. This, we'll say this retrograde season really helped us to get down to the nitty gritty of our problems to really take it gave us an opportunity to take greater control over our lives which also gave us the opportunity to re to create a greater sense of stability here the four of wands is feeling like in our metaphor of like till like uh, revamping your garden right the four of wands feels like the placement or the area that you cleaned out and that was that is now ready for you to start planting in you got the weeds out you got any sort of pests out you inoculated the soil you know you aerated the soil you got it all good ready to go so that it is a clean and rich and healthy environment for you to continue to grow or for you to grow new or grow more okay but the emperor is a very important energy there because it's not about doing all this work to be ready to plant again or to ready to ready to continue or move forward it's also about being protective of that space so that it doesn't become overgrown again or so that it doesn't become riddled with pests or or weeds or uh, 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 foreign plants or, or or toxic plants that you never even wanted there to begin with right there's a very protective energy here now Further clarifying the Hierophant and the Page of Cups, you do have the Ten of Cups in reverse, okay? But you also have that with the Six of Wands upright. Now, the Ten of Cups 
does re can represent either your sense of personal wish fulfillment. It can also represent a collective, the community or the people that you are surrounded by and their wishes and desires that some can often get lost in, right? The Ten of Cups can represent the Twelfth House or it can also represent Piscean energy in that it represents a collective type of energy. But it seems here with this Hierophant energy, there is a level of, I'm sorry, not Hierophant. Well, yes, Hierophant, but Emperor, I meant to say. Emperor energy. There seems to be a lesson that has been learned here in the Hierophant in terms of letting go of the collective's expectations of you and following your own heart, okay? This is no longer strictly about the community. We're not just doing things just for the community any longer because what we seem to have learned here or an element that is possible to, be have, to have learned in this time period is that we cannot be there for the collective if we're not there for ourselves, but also what we do for the collective also benefits us, right? So with that said, in order for you to really be of service to the collective, you have to to keep your boundaries. You have to make sure that you are good and then you can serve the collective. We're not getting lost in the sauce of the collective any longer. Not to say that we're not uh, still a part of the collective, but we've learned that we have to have better, stronger boundaries and protection. The emperor, right? One last card that has fallen face down. Ah, It's the Six of Swords. It did, it was reversed. However, it tried to turn while I was pulling it and it's, it, I'm hearing that it's upright. So there's a sense of moving on. Clarity also that I was hearing with that. Okay, the clarity to move forward. Beautiful. I love this, you guys. Okay, um, let's close this out. Let's get our closing oracle guidance, and I'm being called to use the liquid crystal oracle again. Yes? Fantasmic. Fantastical, even. Ooh, I'm getting sweaty with this sweatshirt on. But hey, it's a sweatshirt, right? <laughs> All right. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three, four, and five. Oops. Alrighty. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit, for today's message. Whoops. There it is. Okay, we have two cards, Botswana Agate, Breathe, and Petrified Wood, Past Life Embrace. Alrighty. Alrighty. The presence of Botswana Agate for you today tells us that the time for a breath of fresh air is here. To the time to become the shepherd of self, not one of the sheep. Mm -hmm. Look deeply. I'm oh, sorry. You are at an you are at the start of an important journey, a bridge to freedom and a new you. Look deeply into self for the truth about your earthly ways and be ready to seek another direction without judgment. It is time to allow a problem that has taken up all your time to find its solution. Doors are opening that have been closed for too long. Be sure to walk through them. ab so fucking lutely Can I get an amen? Yes, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Last, we have Petrified Wood. There we go. All right. Petrified Wood says, The presence of Petrified Wood for you today means there is information coming to you from past lifetimes. 
Pay attention to your dreams and to any messages that you are receiving. A simple way to collect this information is to sit with a pen and paper in the presence of this card, if you can. Place the pen on paper and simply write. Have the intention of answering any questions relative to your past lifetimes, or you may even wish to write the questions out prior to beginning. The secret with automatic writing, as it is called, is to not read what you have written until you have finished. In Petrified Wood's presence, it is also good to take time to discover the important things in life, discerning them from the things that are out of your control. Such realization simplifies life, reduces stress, and allows, and allows progress. Beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>